A war is going on in the Pacific Ocean. Catching fish is the only way to survive. Equipped with advanced technology, this tuna trawler leads the way. It is a fight to protect tuna. The tuna wars have begun. Tuna is atop the oceanic food chain, and debate over this fish, called the royalty of the sea, is growing. A war to win markets. Will tuna be eaten or protected? Neither side will give up their tuna. An important conference is held in March. A vote is held on whether to ban bluefin tuna fishing. Overfishing has depleted fish stocks. Bluefin tuna are now an endangered species. It's autumn in Seoul. On weekend nights, this tuna restaurant is deluged with reservations. Stopping for a moment, the chef gives a lively lecture about tuna. If you want to enjoy the true taste of tuna, then he believes you need to know some facts about it first. There are even tuna tasting clubs in which tuna lovers meet regularly and dine at the best tuna restaurants in the city. They share information on their favorite haunts. Tuna has quite a following. Koreans consume about 15,000 to 20,000 tons of tuna a year. That makes Korea the third largest tuna consuming country after the US and Japan. In Japan, where practically every citizen professes a love for tuna, the food holds a special place in their hearts. Tokyo's Tsukiji Fish Market, Japan's largest tuna market. At 3 a.m., you can watch the auction at the tuna auction market. Tuna caught in the Atlantic Ocean, Mediterranean Sea, and even the Indian Ocean are frozen and shipped to this market. The world price of tuna is determined here. Sushi is a favorite food in the country. Japanese people eat sushi on special days of celebration. Sushi made from tuna is considered a delicacy. Since Japan is an island nation surrounded by ocean on all sides, the people there naturally eat a lot of fish, and tuna is their favorite. The Japanese consider a mixture of red and white colors to be the best color blend. 
and tuna, which has an intense red texture, is a food they cannot do without. <laughs> 400 years ago during the Edo period, the trade of beef and pork was banned in Japan. This led to a rise in people eating tuna, a food that has taken on much importance. Japan consumes 410,000 tons of tuna a year. That's about 3.5 kilograms of tuna per person. Tuna is a fish from the Scombridae family, and bluefin tuna is the most coveted tuna among them all. There's southern bluefin tuna, big eye tuna, which is eaten raw, yellowfin tuna, which is eaten as sushi, and albacore, the tuna found in canned tuna. Bluefin tuna is called the royal fish of the seas. After they hatch, they migrate to the deep seas where they live for most of their lives and return to their spawning grounds in the ocean to reproduce. Adult bluefin tuna can grow as long as three meters and weigh more than 300 kilograms during its lifetime. Spending most of its life in the ocean, tuna are fast swimmers and have an extraordinary heart that pumps blood to its powerful muscles. Pound for pound, tuna are the most expensive fish in the world. Due to its large mass, the different parts of tuna have a different taste and texture. Altogether, there are six main sections of a tuna. The tastiest fillet of a tuna is its tail and belly section. The fillet closer to the tail has a richer taste. The next choice fillet is the red akami part. This fillet also has a distinctive taste. This is 여기까지가 뱃살인데 대뱃살 여기 대뱃살이에요 여기까지가 2급 3급 4급 5급 그 다음에 이 부분이 중뱃살 이 부분이 중뱃살 In a side-by-side -side comparison of raw tuna fillet and raw beef, you can hardly tell them apart. Layers of fat are evenly spaced between the tuna meat and they melt in your mouth. Tuna are the only fish species that has layers of fat. In addition, tuna contains DHA and omega-3 fatty acids, which are nutrients that benefit the brain. This makes tuna far more nutritious than beef or any other kind of meat, while also having low caloric content. 단백질에 좋은 급원이 되는 식품이고 또 다른 육류에 거의 포함되어 있지 않은 오메가 3계 지방산을 풍부히 함유하고 있는 식품입니다. 이 오메가 3계 지방산은 체내에서 대사 작용을 통해서 아이코사 노이드라는 물질을 만들 수가 있고요. 이 물질은 체내에서 염증 반응을 억제하는 기능도 있고 또 혈압을 낮춰주고 혈중 지지를 낮춰줌으로 인해서 심장 순환계 질환을 예방하는 효과도 있는 것으로 알려져 있습니다. At Chungnam National University, researchers are studying omega-3 fatty acids extracted from tuna. 유전자 변형기에 암세포를 인젝션해서 종양 형성능을 어떻게 되는가 본 것이고 또 또두 번째는 꼬리에 암세포를 찔러 가지고 그것이 폐로 얼마나 많이 전이 되는가 전이를 억제가 어떻게 되는가 그것을 살펴보는 두 가지 실험을 했습니다. In lab tests, they inject cancer cells into one group of mice that can process omega-3 and into another group of normal mice. They engineered the cancer cells to be able to absorb omega-3. After this, they closely studied the growth of the cancer cells. The results were amazing. 
the cancer in the mice that were engineered to absorb omega-3 had grown smaller compared to the cancer cells in the other control group. And cancer cells that absorbed omega-3 did not spread to other organs. Misaki Port is located in Kanagawa Prefecture. Misaki Port was once famous for supplying tuna to the Emperor of Japan. As a town where the finest tuna in Japan is bought and sold, there are quite a few tuna restaurants here. Misaki's fish market is different from others. There is only one type of fish traded here, unlike in other fish markets. Misaki Market specializes in the auction of tuna. Tuna from far off places as well as those caught near the shores of Japan are sold here. Inspecting the tail of a tuna is the best way to determine its quality. So the frozen tail is cut off and thawed so that potential buyers can see the color and texture of the tuna fillet. Buyers make sure there is no coagulated blood in the tuna meat before bidding on the tuna. Bluefin tuna commands the highest prices among other tuna species at the auction. The average selling price for bluefin tuna is $2,600, but it's becoming rare to see any bluefin tuna on the auction block. Every Sunday morning, the tuna market opens to the public. Large frozen tuna pass by shoppers who are awed by the sheer size of the super fish. Japanese and foreigners flock to the market to see these sights. At one shop in the market, different tuna parts are sold. Red tuna fillet is the most popular part sought by Japanese customers. This coveted meat is found in adult-sized tuna and contains more fat than other fillet. For more than 400 years, tuna has become a symbol of Japan and a part of Japanese food culture. The people wait in line for more than an hour for the chance to eat special tuna dishes. This restaurant serves tuna dishes made from fresh tuna bought from the market every morning. But there's another reason the place is so popular. Instead of serving traditional sushi, 
the chef offers an unconventional menu of fried, roasted, and boiled tuna dishes. The dishes vary according to the tuna part it is made from. Tuna head meat is known for its chewy texture. The insides of the tuna, which were usually discarded and not eaten, are served as delicacies here. Every part of the tuna is made into an edible meal. There's tuna steak, tuna scale tempura, and other dishes that bring out the flavors of tuna. Customers can order a special course of assorted tuna parts. People come from all over Japan to visit Misaki and try these expensive dishes. The adoration people lavish on tuna is remarkable. As tuna fetches a high price on the market, many fishing trawlers comb the world's oceans to catch this prized fish. But overfishing has reached dangerous levels as the tuna population has plummeted. Fewer tuna have been caught in recent times. Only about 2.4% of the estimated 2.4 million tons of tuna is hauled in a year. Protesting the overfishing of tuna, international environmental organizations have been warning for years that the bluefin tuna could become extinct. Desoyang 대서양 주변을 참치에 한해서 해양 보호 지역으로 설정을 하고요. 다음에 이제 몰려들고 있는 남태평양 주변의 바다들도 역시 마찬가지로 해양 보호 지역으로 설정을 해서 참치를 그 어느 정도 생태가 회복될 때까지는 보호할 수 있도록 하는 그런 협정이 필요하다고 생각을 합니다. In Doha, Qatar in March 2010. The Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species was held to vote on whether to ban bluefin tuna fishing in the Atlantic Ocean. Due to the alarming drop in bluefin tuna populations, especially in the Mediterranean Sea and Atlantic Ocean, Monaco proposed a fishing ban in the Atlantic Ocean until the tuna stock recovered to healthy levels. Japan was surprised by the proposal to ban tuna fishing. え、いつでも食べられる。で、やっぱり回転寿司とかね、独特の日本のそういうお寿司屋さんとかもありますから、そこ行けば安く食べられる。で、スーパー行けば安く手に入る。うん、もうまさかこのマグロがやっぱり資
two-thirds of the 170 nations that signed the Washington Treaty tentatively supported an embargo on the trade of bluefin tuna. It was a situation that could pose a grave threat to nations that consume tuna. Japan sent its Minister of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries to the Doha Convention and vigorously lobbied nations to oppose the ban. The premise that tuna was on the brink of extinction was attacked. The decision could adversely affect Korea as well. Korea's tuna fishing industry had annual export revenues of $300 million. Korean fishermen entered the tuna fishing scene in June 1957. Jinam Ho was Korea's first tuna trawler to be deployed in the high seas. At the time, though, few Koreans knew or ate tuna. Nevertheless, Jinam Ho set sail from Busan Harbor to catch a fish whose appearance was unknown to people. The trawler headed to the Indian Ocean and caught its first tuna on its 47th day at sea. It was the first tuna caught by a Korean fishing boat, and people were pinning big hopes on it. That first fish was actually a marlin and weighed a half a ton, which was rather small, but it was the beginning of an industry that would thrive. <laughs> The talks in Doha pertain to a fishing ban in the Atlantic Ocean, where Korean boats do not fish. Korea's fishing quotas have been reduced substantially, especially in the case of tuna fishing quotas. Jiang Sengpo port in Ulsan is an example of what happens when a full ban is imposed. In 1987, the International Whaling Commission decided to ban the commercial sale of whale meat and whale catching. Ulsan an unregulated whale catching industry affected Jiang Sang Po as too many whales were caught. When certain types of whale became endangered, the commercial sale of whale was banned, and people in the whaling industry lost their jobs, turning Jiang Sang Po into a virtual ghost town. Once populated by 6,500 people, the town only has 3,000 residents today. The 
길을 걸었죠. 어, 한때는 정말 뭐 어, 개미새끼 한 마리 얼씬하지 않을 정도로 한 얼씬에서는 이런 어, 도시로 어, 전락한 시절도 있었습니다. Whaling has become an erstwhile business. 넓다. It is hard to imagine that whales ever spouted trails of vapor and water off the coasts of Korea. But if the overfishing of tuna continues unabated, tuna will soon meet the fate of whales. The town's tourism revenues fell after the whaling business shut down. This restaurant was once a popular place that served whale meat. Food connoisseurs relished eating whale meat as a delicacy that had as many as 12 flavors. Now it is hard to sample any such meat. Most of the local whale meat restaurants went out of business. <laughs> This restaurant has been handed down for three generations and was famous for its whale meat dishes, but there are hardly any customers. After whales became an endangered species, this town was dealt a similar fate. Tuna trawlers dock at Gamcheon Port in Busan. After spending 18 months in the Pacific Ocean, one tuna trawler was returning to unload its frozen catch. Overfishing of tuna is making the fish an endangered species, leading to international conventions to ban the sale of tuna. But are bluefin tuna really disappearing? The 300-ton trawler opens its cargo bay. Workers quickly unload the tuna. There are yellowfin tuna and big-eye tuna, but no bluefin tuna. Yellowfin tuna and big-eye tuna are served raw. To keep the tuna fresh, they're processed and sliced in less than 10 minutes. About 70% of the catch will be exported at profitable prices, but will bring in less than what bluefin tuna fetches. The situation is similar in Japan. Tuna caught off the shores of Japan are brought to Misaki port. Bluefin tuna is hard to find at this market, but a graver issue is that yellowfin tuna, big-eye tuna, and other tuna species are not as abundant as they were. The depleted stock of wild tuna is visible at the market. Yeah, 
最初は、まあ、岬はねあのマグロの町だからいろんな繊維さんも何も結構いたんだけど今はだんだんほらグローバル化してきてそれで繊維さんもみんな外人さんがいろいろねいろんなところの外人さんが乗ってそれでやっぱ原船船も厳選されて昔から比べるとだいぶその水揚げもあの船員も船の数も減ってきましたよね。Many Japanese are aware that tuna populations are at dangerous levels, but this does not dissuade them from eating more tuna than any other nation does. After lobbying strenuously to fight a ban on tuna fishing, Japan succeeded. In favor of the proposal as proposed by Monica, 20. Against the adoption of the proposal by Monaco, 68. Abstentions, 30. Thank you. The vote ended with the ban getting struck down. Yes, in the 90s and 2000s, the fishing was very slow. But it was not slow to be 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 slow. それがみんななくなるってことじゃなかったんですけどね。はい、However, the dwindling population of bluefin tuna is a worrisome issue for the Japanese government. That's why Japan has funded research in tuna farming along the Amami coast. Bluefin tuna are raised in inland net pens. Having researched bluefin tuna farming techniques for years, the research farm currently has 630 two year old tuna. できています。今から15年前ですね。ただあの私たちのあの水産総合研究センターがマグロの技術開発を始めたのは1985年からです。その時にはあのキハダマグロ、あとクロマグロですね。これらの種苗生産技術の開発をするという目的で、えー、研究が始まりました。Japanese farmed bluefin tuna are superior in terms of the artificial breeding techniques. Researchers have perfected here. Most tuna farms catch tuna fry in the wild and then raise them in net pens. But Japan succeeded in breeding tuna through artificial insemination, which allows them to raise larger numbers of tuna. Japan's Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries collaborated with a local university to research tuna breeding and has even branded their farm tuna in the market. The farm tuna is delivered to markets without being frozen, and they're sold with the university's name tagged on the tuna. The Japanese find farm tuna just as delicious as wild tuna. The fresher taste of unfrozen tuna appeals to many Japanese tuna lovers, and 2,000 farm tuna are sold a year. その畜養の元となる魚は全部天然から取ってくるんですね。それはあの正直言って天然のマグロと養殖のマグロとではその味が違います。今の段階ではですね。で、消費者がどちらを好むかということにかかってくると思います。で、Port Lincoln is situated along the coast of southern Australia. Despite being a tiny port town, 
Port Lincoln has the highest concentration of millionaires in Australia. How did a fishing town with a population of 11,000 suddenly become the richest place in the country? Oh, yeah, there's a lot of wealth come into the city from tuna agriculture um, and kingfish. They grow a lot of kingfish now. And the future of the industry benefits our, our whole community. Um, you know, it, it pr provides jobs, it, it, it spin off to lots of different businesses, so yeah. Port Lincoln is prospering through its tuna farming industry. The town's economy depends on tuna. The richest man in town is Hagen Stair, who was the first to develop tuna farming techniques. He is currently worth $60 million and made his fortune entirely from tuna. Yeah, now this year, oh, that is because they are in the world is uh, we're catching too much fish. We're catching too much fish. We've got to make an effort. We've got to make an effort to look after our fish. Hagen Stair caught tuna for 45 years, but faced a crisis when the Australian government began setting quotas on tuna catches in the early 1990s. Due to the quotas, many local fishermen went out of business, and he decided to try to raise tuna on farms. Aquaculture is the fish of the future. There's nothing else. Regardless what you say, there always will be wild fishing. There always will be wild fishing. But the quota system around the world, as you will know, is getting less and less and less and less. So what's the answer? You oh, The answer is offshore aquaculture. There is nothing else. You can't go close in, you gotta go offshore, further and further offshore. And that's what we're all about. These are inland tuna farms in Port Lincoln. About 150 net pens owned by Hagen Stir and other tuna farm owners raise southern bluefin tuna here. They catch bluefin fry between January and March and then raise them in these net pens for about six months. They carefully regulate the number of tuna fry that go into each net pen in accordance with government regulations. There are a number of, number of reasons uh, for that innovation. Uh, um, largely driven by the contracting uh, 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 wild catch or wild harvest, so the, the amount of fish that can be taken from the wild is was contracting over time. So the industry to try and keep uh, um, pace with market demand um, uh, innovated the way that they actually um, presented the fish to the market. So by being able to um, transfer the wild caught fish into cages and be able to feed them over a period of time and, and, and essentially um, fatten the fish up and value add uh, to, the, to the wild catch and then be able to sell the fish into market um, uh, fresh rather than frozen. Um, that was the primary driver behind um, the, the initial innovation. How is southern bluefin tuna, which is famous for its buttery taste, raised here? The tuna farms adopted a self-imposed stoppage of farming for six months every two years. They also banned the use of antibiotics and chemicals in the waters. The most important aspect of tuna farming is developing the right tuna feed. They need to fatten the tuna as quickly as possible to sell them in the market. The tuna are fed twice a day on a high-protein diet. Wow. 
Oh, they're made of uh, they have fish meal and fish oil, but also uh, some other raw materials uh, to make a product very sustainable um, and uh, a very purified skin on the outside. So it's very, very digestible to the fish. Beer Group, we are trying um, feeding uh, man-made food, but out of, out of fish meal, but uh, a man-made food uh, uh, either a sausage, a sausage type product, or also a pellet. Um, we've been trying this for three years, just trying to get uh, right, because I think this is more sustainable. Um, I think better, better FCR, or food conversion ratio, to produce better fish. Uh, we can control the fats and vitamin levels, so this is uh, very important. Divers are omnipresent at Australia's fish farms. They dive into the pens to check and repair the nets and also look out for any sea creatures that might attack the tuna. That's it, nothing less. Well, whenever we get rough weather, we get a lot of damage. We have the net tears and rope breakage of ropes. So whenever after a big wind, we have to come out and, and check all the cages, repair all the ropes. But we build them very strong at the start so they can they survive. In July, they begin harvesting the tuna, and this is carried out over the course of three months. Now there are only a few tuna left in the pens. Today, uh, about 200. Today, just a small harvest. 200, 220. Once the heavy equipment is ready, they begin hauling in the tuna. The divers are responsible for catching each tuna. To make sure the bodies of tuna are not harmed, divers kill the tuna by inserting their hands into the gills. Tuna can raise their body temperatures unlike normal fish can, and when under stress, they generate more heat which can roast their muscles. Thus, it's the diver's job to kill the tuna quickly to prevent this from happening. The effort of these divers allows the tuna to be in fine condition when served fresh. You can use a hook, but it's too slow. This is the fastest way and best way for the fish. Yeah. Grab them by hand, and the, no, nothing gets broken then. Keep in good condition. The tuna is quickly gutted and sliced to prevent the organs from rotting the meat. The gills and intestines are removed, as well as all the blood. Then, each tuna is weighed and measured. This tuna weighed about 25 kilograms after its insides were removed. These rigorous measurements and processing techniques are vital information that can help tuna farmers refine their techniques to raise better tuna. We, we try different things nearly every year, uh, different cages. Uh, now we go, next year we're going out deeper. We're going twice as far as here. 35 miles, it'll take three to four hours to get there, but the water's deeper and clearer and even better again. So we're going to try this to produce better tuna again. So. Port Lincoln was able to flourish thanks to people who met a challenge with an innovative idea. After the tuna is processed by hand, it is immersed in a bath of ice water between 12 to 24 hours to reduce the body heat before it is delivered. Most of the farmed tuna is exported to Japan, but they also recently began getting shipped to Korea. Well, 
the, the quantity that comes from Port Lincoln, Australia has international quota for 4,000 tonnes of tuna. Now, generally, we most of that in Australia is farmed. The farming, we tow the fish in, and generally, we double their weight in six months. So, Australia has quota for 4,000 tonnes. Uh, generally, in the farming situation, we will double that weight to about 8,000 tonnes. So that is roughly uh, what Port Lincoln does. There is some wild caught tuna in Australia from the east coast. The townspeople of Port Lincoln no longer depend on catching tuna in the high seas. They know very well that the future of the tuna industry lies in tuna farming. They also predict that as the wild tuna populations continue to dwindle, their tuna farming business will generate more interest from abroad. But I really believe because the environmental, you have a look at it, the environmental pristine conditions we have got here in Port Lincoln, the, the, we got tuna very, very close, uh, close to Port Lincoln between a combination between the wild fish side with southern bluefin tuna and uh, the aquaculture side, but mainly the aquaculture side. I believe, not I believe, I know, I know, and that is a direct statement, I know that in the future uh, Port Lincoln will, will become bigger and bigger and bigger and be one of the main tuna centers in the world, without any doubt, without any doubt. Rising incomes and huge profits from the tuna farming business are why Australia is placing big bets on tuna. There is even a mini submarine tour that takes tourists into tuna net pens. The fact that you can see tuna swimming before your very eyes is drawing tourists to Port Lincoln. Uh, this tour is for uh, understanding the, the key fishing industries in Port Lincoln. Um, it concentrates on, on tuna, uh, of course, being number one. Uh, prawns, uh, the Southern King prawn, uh, abalone, um, uh, uh, lobster, and uh, of course, uh, sardines as well. There are other programs for families as well. <laughs> Tourists can feed the tuna and even dive into the pens. Swimming with tuna is a thrilling experience. Fantastic, they're just so close, they're right there in front of your face, you can just about reach your hand out and touch them and yeah, it was fantastic. So when uh, when you throw a few fish around it gets a little bit uh, a bit frenzied, but um, which is a bit scary, but yeah, it was awesome, fantastic. Very good, really, and it's uh, one of a kind and it's, um, I think, really very fascinating and uh, exciting. Fish farming has expanded into tourism and other businesses. The Turby family became wealthy with their tuna business and opened their own winery. They developed sashimi wine, which they export to Japan. In February, the town holds the Tunarama Festival to spread the fame of Port Lincoln throughout Australia. More than 100 people participated in the tuna tossing competition at the festival. It has become an exotic sporting event. New industries have sprung up just from one type of fish, and the direct and indirect economic benefits from this are immeasurable. I, well, I mean, I think Port Lincoln can only go further ahead. Um, um, the industry is, is relatively young, I suppose, when you look at how long we've been involved in aquaculture and in that sort of that farming of, of the sea and you know I don't I don't know what's a what's ahead of us but um, I can certainly see it's certainly very positive 
very positive for, for our area and I think we can only capitalise on that in the future. Then how about Korea? In the waters off Jeju, there is something being tried for the first time, open sea underwater cultivation. The open sea underwater cultivation pen is three kilometers away from the coast and 45 meters underwater. Bluefin tuna are cultivated deep in the ocean, in a near-natural environment for the fish. However, this is a dangerous situation. To be cultivated in underwater pens, the tuna must be moved from their inland pens. The smallest problem in the transportation process could lead to a devastating group death of the tuna. Open sea cultivation is filled with dangerous risks. Why is Korea attempting this? Korea 같은 같은 경우는 그 아주 환경 자체가 좋은 환경이다 보니까 그 생존율이 높아서 경제성을 더 높일 수 있는 그런 장점이 있고요. 있는 바다기 때문에 그 이런 물론 그런 밖에서 유입되는 그런 오염원도 적을 것이고 그다음 그 오염원 자체도 이렇게 빨리 확산됨으로써 자연에 미치는 영향이 적을 거라고 생각해서 A two day battle of bluefin tuna transportation and the tough process of putting the tuna under water As open water cultivation, which closely resembles natural cultivation, becomes successful, Jeju Island is being considered the new mecca of tuna cultivation. The fantastic taste of tuna has made it popular around the world. However, if overfishing continues at this pace, tuna will soon become extinct. A lack of tuna in the ocean will ruin the fishing industry and hurt the economy. It is time to save tuna. The tuna industry's future lies in these tuna farms. Success in farming tuna will determine who will lead the fishing industry. Korea experiments with an open sea net pen, which garners worldwide attention. World's first success in farming bluefin tuna in submerged net pens in the open sea. 
overcoming the limitations of inland tuna breeding farms. Bluefin Tuna Breeding Farms, a high value added business of the future. Open sea breeding farms show great promise.